Hi everyone and welcome to Adobe Live. I'm Flynn and I'm joined once more by Ben Marriott. Hi Ben, how are you? Hi Flynn, great to be here. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks so much for having me. That's excellent. And uh, hey chat, what's up? Happy Friday, um, wherever you are in the world. Uh, thanks Johanna again for jumping in and moderating for us today, capturing all the useful links and everything. Hey Luke, hey Eva, hey Logan Robinson, Luke from USA, great to have you here. Um, happy Thursday evening, I believe. And Tyson's back. Uh, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. So much more fun when we have lots of people in the chat to ask lots of questions. Um, and uh, thank you for those who, uh, who join us for the other days. Um, and Ben, what did we cover? I thought we were going to do a quick little kind of recap. What do you think? Absolutely. So here's a quick recap so you know what you missed, so you can go back and watch some of the other streams if you're interested in learning those. So the first stream we did on Wednesday, we talked about, we broke down this animation a bit and talked about adding some of the key elements here, like the glows um, around the planets and how to get these glows sort of animated and how to do this reflection as well. And really just how to add some really, some really nice effects that without even really animating much, we're not adding much keyframes, you can mm. add a whole bunch of life to a pretty, pretty simple sort of static sort of sort of animation here. And then we covered in the next lesson, in the next uh, in the next stream the next day, I think it's a little bit bigger, we covered this. So we made, um, made this footage here. <laughs> we we tracked some text into, into this footage using the 3D camera tracker, and then we explored some green screen keying. So we keyed out this gentleman here and then inserted him into the scene and learned some really cool tricks to composite him into the scene so we can match the color, mm. match sort of the blurriness, the focus, and then add some little bit of extra details like adding his shadow and putting that in there as well. So it kind of, you know, brings the whole thing together. Yeah, it was it, it, all those subtle kind of um, subtle changes seemingly, but then when you look at the before and after, it was always such a such a huge difference to, to really kind of put that stuff into the frame. Mm, absolutely. Um, so that's awesome. So just before we sort of jump into things, I thought I thought we would give everyone just a bit of an idea of what we're going to do today. So we're here with you for about an hour and 25 minutes and um, we've got some time for Q&A. Um, so if you do have questions as we go, we'll try to answer them, sure. Um, but we've actually got some time set aside. So after the first 30 minutes of being in here, we're going to tackle a bunch of questions. So feel free to drop them in at any point. Um, shout out to Eva for being up at 2 a.m. in the UK. Amazing. Um, yeah. I'll be very impressed if you last if you last an hour and a half. But just just being here is very, very nice. It's very lovely. Hope you're doing well. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so within about 30 minutes, we'll, we'll jump in and answer some questions. And that can be about... Uh, what amazing work Ben is showing us. Um, we had a lot of questions yesterday about, about freelancing and creating content and sort of career and portfolio advice as well. Um, and Ben, I'm sure you're happy to answer those questions too. Absolutely. Anything related to motion design, animation, anything or anything else as well. Yesterday you promised we'd answer my favorite dinosaur and we never got to that. We didn't oh, we didn't get to that. Oh. So maybe maybe the end of the episode today, if anyone can guess my favorite dinosaur, they'll get bonus points. Wow. Yeah, actually, we might be able to get something special to someone if they if they guess your favorite dinosaur. That would be cool. How about we do that? I'm sure we can. I'm sure All we right. can arrange something. Perfect. Um, what do you say we get into it? All right, let's get into it. So today we're going to cover a few different things. I think today we'll just cover I've got like three or four really cool effects that we can uh, bounce around in between that are mainly focused on just, you know, adding extra stuff to your animation without really animating too much more. So at the start, we're going to cover repeaters. So this is just on one shape layer with, I think, maybe two or three keyframes, and we've got all this animation. Cool. So we're going to cover repeaters there and then make this, this circle animation with repeaters as well. So you can see you can get a lot of impact and a lot of different cool effects just on a couple of layers. And then I think we'd break down this animation as well. So this is using the echo effect to add some really cool sort of, you know, delayed blurry action to your scenes. And you, know, you can see how powerful this is when we get into that section. And then I thought I'd share one of my favorite effects, uh, CC Collider. And I don't have that set up here, but we're going to get into that later. And then I thought we'd do a little bonus section where I share some of the, the weirder effects in After Effects that you might not have heard of and that can do some really interesting, powerful, but also bizarre things as well. So, <laughs> and if, so like we, you know, what you'll see how bizarre they can get. You think, 
that's that's in this software. That's awesome. I don't know whether I'll ever need that, but it's good to know it's there. Good to know. Yeah. It's a very Friday, Friday style stream. I like it. Absolutely. And then drop in the chat as well. If you have any, like really, if you found some weird effects in After Effects and say like, I found this, I don't know how to, like, I don't know what it would be used for, but you know, it exists. And I'm sure someone is that someone out there is using it for really powerful stuff. Nice. All right. So how about we get started with some repeaters? Cool. All right. So I'm going to start in this comp here and I'm just going to hide these layers down the bottom here so that we might be able to refer to them if, if we need to later. But let's start by adding a new shape layer because you have to add um, repeaters on shape layers. So you can add a shape layer just by right clicking down here in the timeline, and selecting new shape layer. And at the moment it's empty because we've got no shapes in there. So then we need to toggle down this arrow here and also let's rename this. Let's call this square, re square repeater animation, square repeater for now. And we've got our contents menu down here and we've got a little add here. So let's add something. Let's first add, let's first add an empty group. And that's going to come in handy to give us more transform properties once we add our objects. So we've got our group and now let's add to that group a rectangle. And that rectangle is just a path at the moment. It doesn't have a fill or a stroke. So let's go and select add a stroke as well. And now we can see we've got a rectangle right here in the middle. And I'm going to tick on my bounding box here so we can see the edges of that rectangle. And now let's add our repeater. So I'm going to select on group and then add where's repeater down here. Ah, actually, I don't want my repeater to be in this group. So I want to go back up to contents and add the repeater here as well. Um, here, here for now. So we've got a group up here, which has our rectangle in there. And then we have a repeater, which is repeating the contents of that group. The repeater will repeat everything above it in this stack. And at the moment, you can see we've got three copies of this rectangle. And we can see down here, but copies three. So we can increase that to, let's say 10. And it just, and we've got more versions of it here. And if we go down to transform properties of this repeater, we can see we've got, we can transform its anchor point, its position, its scale, rotation, and opacity as well. And at the moment, the only thing um, that we're transforming on this repeater is its position. So it's moving its X position 100 pixels. So that means every time it repeats, it's repeating 10 times because of our copies and it's moving this rectangle 100 pixels to the right. And it looks like our rectangle is 100 by 100 pixels. So it's, you know, it just looks like a long bar here. But if we extend this out, we can see it's pushing them further and further away. And if we bring it in closer, they start to overlap. So let's put this to zero. And that will mean it looks um, identical because all of them are stacked on top. They're not being transformed in any way. There's just 10 copies duplicated. What we can do now is adjust the scale. So I'm going to start to scale this up. And now we can see, let's push it to like 120. Maybe let's nudge it a bit more so it fills out this screen. I want it to line up with the, uh, the total here. So 130%. And so each, each um, individual, like each, uh, each duplicate is increasing its scale by 130%. So we've got our original one at 100%, the next one's at 130, and the next one will be 130 of that one. So it keeps, you know, um, it keeps increasing. So now, and of course we can animate these properties if you wanted to have a zoom in or zoom out, you can kind of get a sort of 3D tunnel effect, which is really cool. But I think we want to play with the rotation as well. So if we start rotating it, ooh, let's go somewhere in the middle. And rotate it we can see that the rotation is increasing as well so let's say if we go to um 10 degrees our first one is rotating 10 degrees and then our next one is rotating 10 degrees from that previous version so 20 degrees in total so by the time we get to the end here this one's uh, rotated 90 degrees and lines up with the with the edge let's increase it a bit more but another full rotation because i want to see these these lines sort of line up here so we don't have any gaps and let's keyframe that rotation and maybe go to the go to two seconds here or maybe let's go right to the end to four seconds and let's increase that rotation and if we add 90 degrees to that because we've got yeah 90 degrees that's a right angle it should look it should look the same so we get 20 plus 90 because we can do a little math in here 
there we are we've got 110 degrees that that's pretty basic math i should have known that I don't need to, I don't it's friday it's hard, it's hard doing I math know. with a, with an audience and the, exactly and the, the calculator does that for us that's right so now our first and our end frame look the same but if we play the animation we can see we've got a crazy rotation happening here and wow that might be that's looking pretty nice. It's pretty cool. Let me have a see. Mm. So we've just got two keyframes. That's all we've animated. And we've got this, you know, awesome animation here. Now we can do a whole bunch of things to this as well. So we've animated the rotation, but we can also animate the scale as well. So the scale is at 130. I want it to loop, so let's keyframe it again at 130 at the end. But maybe in the middle, we take the scale down a touch. Let's see how that looks. So that kind of shrinks and unfurls back out. And what else can we do? We can move its position. Ah, if we move the position, so we've got our X and our Y position um, separated here. But if we move that to the side, we can see that every time, you know, every new instance of this square, it's pushing it to the left. So we can get kind of a, it kind of looks almost 3D. Yeah, so some 3D kind of effects going on there, yeah. Yeah, you can get a bit of parallax there. So that's really handy. I'm not sure if that's gonna work. For our example here, and we've also got our opacity as well. So we've got our start opacity. So if we turn that down, we can see the ones in the middle, 0%, uh, you know, opaque. So they're completely see-through. And then the ones at the edge are, you know, completely visible. But we can also, let's turn this back up to 100. We can go into our original group and edit the inside here. So whatever we edit inside this group, whatever we change to our rectangle, it's going to change outside here. All the it's going to repeat all of those changes. So we can alter its size, um, turn it, make it larger and smaller. That's not going to do much. It's kind of just going to scale it and maybe adjust the stroke width. But we've also got its position and its roundness. Roundness is really interesting. So if we increase the roundness, it's going to round the corners mm -hmm. and then slowly become a circle. So that's a really, a really awesome way. If you want to transform between a square and a circle, you can just make a, a rectangle. Uh, make it a square and just increase the roundness and you've got a nice mm. nice clean morph there That's good tip so let's keyframe the round the roundness at zero here and then in the middle i think maybe what's it 20 roundness that's looking not too bad but let's get it to a full maybe not a full circle maybe 30. that looks pretty interesting oh, exactly on two seconds i'm a keyframe behind and then at the very end let's copy and paste that first keyframe which is zero let's see how that looks yeah, it looks really neat. I like how it looks at this stage here, where it's kind of like wobbly and, and you can kind of see these sort of, um, you know, kind of like tendrils spinning out here in a current kind of spiral pattern. Mm. And we've got, you know, that's just an extra three keyframes and we've got another cool effect. And also this rectangle doesn't have a fill, but while we're in this group, we can add a fill to it and that fills it with a color. But then up here on the top left, you know, of course, we can change the color to what we want. But we can also alt click and change its fill to maybe a gradient fill so that's just given us this default uh, gradient going from blue to white and if we play that we've got this nice sort of helix spirally pattern and oh, wow. that actually look that's that pretty cool really good here. i did not know this would look it's good that's a pretty good design i'm gonna i might steal that later got some some hoons racing behind me i'm not sure if you can pick that up on the mic um but yeah there we go i'm actually i'm I'm going to take this. You some. <laughs> that was a happy little accident that that looks so nice. And that's <laughs> Channeling Bob first. Ross, just a happy little accident. Happy little accident. Some happy little trees. Look at that. That's a nice little style frame because we've got the you know the gradient cycling rotating as well. Mm. Let's see what happens when we add some more color to this gradient. Now that we've gotten this, so let's push this blue to the middle, add a new color on the right. Maybe make a white at the edge. Now let's make a pink at the edge. Drag a pink up here. Mm -hmm. Now, what, why isn't that visible? Why can't we see our pink? Let's move this all the way over the edge. Now we get a bit of pink. How does that look? All right, not as good. Let, let's, let's be honest. Not as good as it was before. <laughs> but let's go back. There we are. Lovely. That's the basics of how repeaters work. And you can really just um, keep you know, animate one thing and then make a bunch of copies of it to get some really neat effects. Yeah, it's pretty so cool. I'm gonna show you, yeah, I'm gonna show you another one with some circles. And let's try to create, recreate this sort of 
explosion here that we get. So let's start by creating a new shape layer, new, new shape layer. And of course, let's call this circle repeater because we don't want the layer police coming after us. I know they came around yesterday, didn't they? They did. Let's add another group and inside that add an ellipse and give that ellipse a stroke. Let's give this one a fill as well. Oops, accidentally turned it into a 3D layer. We don't need that. And let's go for a white fill. And we can maybe turn down the size of this ellipse. Ellipse, ellipse. <laughs> and let's, let's change the position as well. So instead of putting it right in the very center of our shape, let's see what happens when we move it upwards a fair bit. Let's move it minus 200 pixels. Now let's add a repeater. So I'm going to select contents and add the repeater here. And we can see we've got our three, um, our three repeaters as default. Let's change this to let's make 18. And let's, and also the offset here, what this does is it can offset it to the left or the right. So mm -hmm. if we change this down to five, we can see that, and then there's the zero as the default is. When we increase it uh, by like when we make it minus one or minus three, it just moves them to the other side. So you know it just shifts. It offsets. It offsets the uh, <laughs> the repetition, as we describe here. But we want more. Let's go up to eighteen. And then we are going to rotate these. So with our transform repeater, we are going to add some rotation. And you can see, oops, as we rotate these, these oh, we've wow. got some chaos going here. That's going crazy. Now, that's because we're still offsetting our position by 100. So let's turn our position back down to zero. Now, if we rotate them, we can see them uh, slowly. And they are much nicer. And, that, and they're rotating uh, around this anchor point here. And an easy way to... Now, if we can see 20 degrees. It kind of lines up perfectly. But you might not um, know how many repetitions are going to line up for your circle. I'm going to line up and make a perfect circle. So let's go in, let's turn our circle a bit lower so we can fit a bit more in and move it to position further away. And let's choose a really odd number of copies. Let's, let's what's, what's a prime number? That's seven, seven's a prime number. So we've got seven. So how many, rep, uh, well, there's not gonna be enough. What's another prime number? Prime numbers don't get 20, 21 isn't. But let's go to 21. Uh, so this is, it kind of almost lines up here. Mm. So you can see we've got two overlapping circles. So we know we're close with a with a 19 degree rotation. But an easy way to figure this out is to go is to just type in 360 forward slash slash which is divided by and then 21. Oh wow! So you divide by the number of copies, and yeah, that will figure that. out exactly what we need. 17.1 copies. Nice. There we are. So you can need odd numbers, and that's just a really easy way to figure out that stuff. And now we've got a whole bunch of circles repeating around here. And of course, if you wanted to animate these all coming on, you could keep in the rotation. Let's move that to one second. And then at the start, sort of decrease that rotation to zero. So now they all sort of merge and line up like that. Let's keep ours all visible from the very start. Let's have a sip of water. Important to stay hydrated out there. That's especially true. When working, especially when working with repeaters. And now what we're going to do is add another repeater. You can stack repeaters as much as you want. So we're going to repeat this repeater, we're just adding another one. And we can see by default, it makes three copies. Move to the right by 100 pixels. Let's make 10 copies. So a bunch now. And we can lower that to position. And we can also get an, a little sort of 3D effect here, where it kind of looks like a cylinder is waving in front of us. But let's change that to zero and then let's turn down the scale and we're going to get a really cool tunnel down here and if we want to make it um you know ex extend outwards we can change the offset and now it kind of fills out our screen and we can you know just increase the copies and that'll go down you know increase infinitely down there but when you're doing things like this it might be tempted to just you know rack it all the way up to 100 but that's going to add a fair bit of processing power so you're, and you're not going to notice once we get to a certain number. So let's see 
how does 10 look? Well, we did more than 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, around here, mm. we don't really notice, you know, anymore. There's a bit of a, you know, gap in the middle, but I think that's gonna suit, suit us fine. When we get out to sort of this distance, it really makes, you know, no, no difference at all. Let's give that a 20. It's nice to have round numbers when you're typing in things. I mean, often you'll just, you know, drag your slider and you'll come up with, you know, 73.6 degrees or something. But normally when that happens, I like to, you know, round it to 75 or something. And that just makes any calculations that you need to make in the future, like a little bit easier. Mm. You know, it's not essential. You can work them out by to, like adding some, you know, division into your keys here, but, you know, it just keeps things nice and even. All right. So now let's work on some more animation. Let's rotate this a little bit as well. Cause I really like the, the look of things rotating, you know, in sequence. So with our second repeater, repeater two, let's see what the rotation does. So we can see when we start rotating, Nice. you can see the middle starts rotating faster and the outside's a little bit slower. So let's keyframe this at zero. And I'm actually gonna make this a two second loop. So at the moment our workspace is four seconds. But if we go, if we move our playhead over to two seconds and press N on our keyboard, it will bring the um, the end of the workspace to there. And if you want to change the beginning of your workspace, you can press B is the shortcut there. So B for beginning, N for end. I think that's good. <laughs> I think N for end, and they're right next to each other on the keyboard. So I think they're you know making some some, some jumps in logic there, but that's fine. So we need to increase our rotation, and I'm going to see. How much we can, what we need to increase it by to get it to loop properly. So at the moment we've got it at, what was that angle that we need? It was 17.1. So I think if we increase this rotation by 17.1, it all lines up. That's great. So now if we play it back, we've got a bit of rotation and then it all lines up and we loop nicely. Now, what are some things we can do with this now? We can go into our original ellipse down here. We can make this smaller and larger. That looks pretty good, yeah, actually, when you make it larger. Cool. We, get, we get some diamond shapes in the uh, in the negative space. In the negative space. So that'd be kind of good. If, maybe if you want to transition from a you know a white screen to a black screen, you could do something like that. And that's yeah. you know pretty neat. Maybe maybe we'll do a bit of that later. Do you often do you ever do you ever find yourself kind of creating something like this and then thinking, oh, that would be a great transition and kind of saving it or or anything yeah, like that. A, yeah, I have a little, um, sometimes I try, I try to keep a folder of just, you know, like cool After Effects ideas because you come up with these mm. accident, these little things like we did with this, um, that's that square rotation one. I'm definitely going to use that sometime later. Mm -hmm. But, you know, normally while you while you discover these things, you're in another project, which it doesn't suit, suit for. So I'm like, right. okay, I should remember to save this. So there's normally like a comp hidden somewhere in some old project, which has some really valuable like trick that I'm, you know, I've forgotten about by now. But what I should do is, you know, at the end, at the end of this live stream, just save this, like save those comps somewhere. They, you know, come back to these. These, these are good ideas. But yeah, you get a lot of, you know, things, you know, you just fig figure out on, you know, on your own sometimes that you, mm. you don't expect. And that's where some of the, you know, more exciting, promising things happen. So let's change our position of our ellipse here. So at the moment it's up here. So if we change our ellipse position, we can see, oh, we get this nice negative shape here as well. But we can see we've got our original, our original circle up here. And we can see how it's sort of reacting as it gets closer to the middle, all the repeaters get closer as well because their, you know, their scale isn't, you know, when our scale is increasing or decreasing, you know, it doesn't have to go as far. So there we are. So we can get a nice sort of bit of tunnel animation. So if we keyframe this at minus 600 at a start here, and then keyframe it maybe at the end at, let's see, at zero. Ooh, we get right into a circle here. So we get a nice bit of you know, action happening here. I really like this. I don't know why. I'm just really obsessed with this sort of, you know, rotation where it's rotating faster and faster in the middle. Yeah. Something really appealing and hypnotic about that. That makes you just want to look straight in the center. Mm. All right. Now that's looking pretty nice. Okay. So what are some more things we can do to this? We've got a bit more time for our Q and a, so we can. Yeah. So we have a little timer down there. Um, you can see we've got nine minutes, which is impressed. Nobody. Um, 
that I've added in. Uh, just to, <laughs> it's my I'm very impressed, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. I was waiting for someone to say that. Um, nine minutes left, and then we're going to do some Q and A. So, so jump in there. Jump in your questions now. Excellent. So when we get to here, I I don't really like how it starts to sort of clump together here, and we get this flower, and these last few frames aren't very interesting. So maybe when we get halfway, we can keyframe it at minus thirty, and then at the end, keyframe it back up. So it should loop. Yeah. So we have this nice sort of sort of breathing motion here. But these are all linear keyframes. So we want to add some ease to these. So I'm going to press U on my keyboard, and that just brings up, it hides everything that isn't keyframed. So now we can see all of our keyframes here. And if we keep pressing U, it hides everything, and then makes our keyframe visible. So let's select all of these, press F9 on our keyboard to easy ease them. And let's see how that looks. See if we need to. Oh, that looks much better. That's really sort of I know, kind of disorienting how it kind of loops and pulses it, it can very... be it's almost like some of this stuff is like a little bit like a mind trick or something the more you sort of look at it the more yeah it, it looks like, like you. there's some optical illusion going <laughs> mm. that i should be seeing and i want to show you another really cool trick to just make these all look like spheres so these are all 2d objects and one way we can do that is just on the circle repeater right click and choose layer styles so these are things that are going to add these are things that it's going to add on to all of these layers. So let's add an inner shadow. And when we do that, we get this sort of, where you can see a shadow coming in on the left here. And it kind of is starting to look like a sphere, but we can adjust that and make it a bit more obvious. So let's turn the opacity up to, oh, okay, let's keep, let's keep it a bit low, not quite at 100%. It was 75 or 72, wasn't it? Let's keep it at 75. And let's keep the, let's increase the size a bit so it's a bit more of a gradient. Decrease the distance, or maybe, well, let's keep the, yeah, over here looks good. Now, really, we can really see the direction. It's coming from the bottom right. Well, it looks like the light source coming from the bottom right. We're in a Puff Daddy music video right now. Oh, uh, it does. It looks exactly, exactly like, like that. But I always like to have my light source coming from the top left. Um, I Probably 90% of my illustrations have the light source coming from the top left. I don't really know why. It might be... Um, just, I feel more comfortable with that somehow. It looks right to me. I know that's definitely not the right way to light something. Mm. You, know, you can light from any direction, but that's just my habit. So let's go and do that. So we can just that with the angle here. So we shift that and now that's in the top left. And then if we should be able to move the distance further away over here, there we are. And now let's increase the opacity so we've got a nice, so it's almost fades to black over here. And now if we, so that's, and we can also change the fill, the, the, the color of that shadow here. That actually might be nice to give it some, maybe like a, a dark blue shadow here. And then play that and then see how that looks. That's cool. All right. Yeah, there we are. It could be, you know, a tool album cover. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh -huh. and, Subtle change and we've completely changed genres. <laughs> Absolutely. Decades. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And I think that might be it for this little circle animation. And well, let's see. Hang on. I know something we can do. Let's 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 push it more with one or more repeater. Let's see how far <laughs> how far the rabbit hole goes. So one thing we should do is let's go into our first repeater. No, our second repeater and change that offset from minus four to zero to make bring it in a bit smaller. And we could even push it to one. So they're all repeating closer to the middle now, maybe even further, maybe two or three. And now let's add one more repeater. And we get our versions to the left and right. Wow. So what I think we can do with this one, it's kind of mirror it on both sides. So let's transform, go to its position, move it further to the right. So they're not really overlapping. Let's see if I can get it to line up at the very edge here. And then if I change the offset down, we get a duplicate to the left. Let's see, let's see how this looks. Okay, so we've got you know, a nice but a few bunch of a, you know a few copies here. And to create like a if I want to you know another copy up the top left up on the top here and on the bottom, what I can do is let's add another repeater. Go, okay, we only want one copy of this now. 
and we want to transform its position by zero on the x-axis. Maybe, what, where's it gone? We need some copies. Oh, there we are, four, too many. Let's go to two copies. Position we want up here. And to give it um, a bit more of a sort of brick, brick laying sort of pattern, we can move its position over to the right as well. So it kind of fills in that gap a little bit more. And we've got another, got a nice another version here. And then if we wanted an, another version down the bottom, just add another repeater. But you can see we've drawn one circle and just added a whole bunch of effects. And now we have thousands and thousands of this sort of repeating mm. animation. Yeah. And you can always just go in and hide some of the repeaters as well. So if we hide these last two, oh, we can even, let's see what happens if we just hide the first repeater. So now if we, we get this version where it's just repeating um, sort of our spinning rotation. It's not sort of rotating around the, like a clock dial. Mm. So you can, that might be interesting to see, you know, if you hide repeaters near the middle. So now if we hide, you know, we just have the first repeater. We've got them, we've just got them pulsing outwards. So we don't have these ones going inside. Mm. So it's sort of, you know, interesting and really fun to play around with. I really like these sort of procedurally sort of generated animations where you animate something at the start and then you keep, you know, animating on top of that. And then if you mm. make something, you know, and make a small, tiny change at the beginning, like if we go into our group and let's, you know, let's see what happens when we increase the size of our circle now and we get this, you know, this reflection, mm -hmm. this, sorry, you know, sh shape in our negative space. And then, you know, now we get these, you know, cauliflower looking things over here, yeah. but then, oh. That, that's some interesting effect where that's they, where they cool. all overlap. Yeah, there's lots of, you know, interesting things, you know, you can try with repeaters. Try repeaters, they're very fun. Try repeaters, I love it. It's like we're, we're, in the, we're in the lab with you. Like this is just crazy lab time where you're just picking up like elixirs and mixing them together and seeing what happens. Yeah. Yeah, like I try to every now and then sort of when I have some, you know, free time or experiment for, you know, like make some time for, you know, like a research and development just to like explore right. after effects and like play around with, um, you know, what, what effects we have. There we are. Back to the middle. Do we have any questions in the chat? Can we start Q&A? Yeah, we can start Q&A. As a special yeah. Friday treat. Special Friday treat. Let's do it. Um, they, they've earned it. They, you know, they're up in the middle of the night in the, in the UK. If, I know. Actually, yeah. You them. know what? Let's start with Eva's question. This is a great question because it puts the question back on you. Um, oh, all right. <laughs> Eva was asking, what's the, what's the question you never get asked and would like to be asked related to animation or motion design? Oh, just, just, just why are you so talented? That's what <laughs> I, I die for. <laughs> I ask why, you that you so all humble? the time. <laughs> why are you so humble? Why are you so humble? You are the humblest. Oh, oh my, I, I, I haven't thought of that before. What is yeah. something I'd like to be asked? I mean, um, I, I mean, a lot of the technical questions I'm kind of asking myself, like having to make tutorials every week, I'm trying to constantly figuring out, okay, what's something interesting that people like, what's something that people might find interesting yeah. uh, to make videos about. Um, one thing that I have a couple of, there's a couple of tutorials I really want to make that I know probably won't make anytime soon because they're not going to be very exciting and, you know, clickbaity on the thumbnail, but things mm. like, uh, your folder structure and, um, and sort of name layering, I'm sorry, oh, excuse me, your name labeling conventions. Those are things I'm really interested in and there's not an awful lot of information out there about, and kind of think that's sort of really useful to people. So I could maybe talk about that a bit. Because over here in our left, I have got a, um, this is my default, um, you know, folder structure. And you can, what you can do is make a template of this. So what I have is a collection of, you know, all of these folders, they load in every project. So in this project, I'm not going to import any audio or textures, but I've got folders there in case I need to. These are like my most, you know, needed, needed folders. And inside audio, I've already got a folder for mix, music, and voiceover mm. uh, ready to go for when, you know, any client hands me that and in images, I've got ones for logos and reference textures, stills and video, and then solids is just where all our adjustment layers and things are, are created. And then our imports as well. I've got imports for after effects projects like AI, 
uh, um, Illustrator files and PSDs. And at the moment, I've just chucked in some of our, um, you know, renders from the previous lessons. But I have something like this set up, and it's really easy to, um, you know, you just do this one. So set up what your ideal folder structure will be, and you know, a lot of the times I won't need them. So if I know a project's not going to have audio, I'll just delete this folder, delete, and there's you know no consequence there. But you can actually go up to File, and if you go, oh no, it's Edit, Edit Preferences, and I think it's Edit Preferences Import. It might be. Let's see. Oh, there's one setting down here. It might not be Import. Maybe general, um, there's one thing you can do, it's display, import, outlets. There's a lot of menus down here. Mm. Uh, new project, perfect. And we've got here, new project loads template, and I've choose my template. So I've got my, in my, I've got a, you know, a file called ben, BM After Effects project template, and that's saved somewhere. And every time I start a new After Effects document, it will load up this template. So oh, cool. So that that's there, whenever I open After Effects, I've got this, you know, an empty file ready for me to, you know, go in and like get stuck in. And that just saves me a lot of time and keeps things really consistent. So every project I open, I know where all of my, mm. you know, images are going to be and where my logos and stuff are. So hopefully that's uh, useful to you. That's a question, you know, I, I, I rarely get asked, but I think, you know, there's, there's some valuable info for you. That's cool. I really like that. I love, I think it's such an important thing for us all to do to, to um to try to find those 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 shortcuts because if it's something that you're in all the time if you're in this app you know if you're in apps all the time for like half of your day or your entire day or your evening or whatever it is those those little things that you can do to speed up the process and and as you said just get stuck in um is yeah. all, it makes it more pleasurable to work with and it also just is efficient with time definitely because i just find myself every time i open a project i'm making the same 10 folders anyway and right. this is very much tailored to me. Like I've got a textures folder in here because I use textures all the time. Yeah. But if you don't use textures, add add something else. Maybe you've got three D imports or mm. you know stock footage or something like that. And um, yeah, there's another resource. So mine is you know I generally you know work on smaller projects, so I don't have much you know many scenes or things like that. I sort of got I base this off there's a um, an awesome website called I think it's called. Uh, G S Y T, which stands for get your S together and you can fill in the blanks Ooh. and it's got a lot of resources and like a big folder structure for how, you know, a big studio might, um, you know, structure their folders where they've got, you know, folders for each individual shots and ones for different type of footage and King and all like way more than I need. So I mm. just, you know, I sort of taken that renamed a few things and made it leaner for what I need most of the time. And then most of the projects I don't need, you know, might not need audio or any imported projects or textures. So I, you know, delete them or sometimes just leave them in or, you know, just hide the assets folder. So I don't need to see them. And you should use a lot of folders. Like it doesn't matter like how many folders you've got nested. Like I, I've got, you know, three folders deep in my assets folder, but mm. you know, you just hide them and they're not there anymore. And, you know, it's, <laughs> I just find it easy to, na to navigate that way. Yeah, it's cool. It's good. It's good advice. Um, so we'll go on to another question. So it's questions from Luke. Uh, mm -hmm. So you design some great stuff on the fly at the moment. This question is, um, do you design more in After Effects or does your wor workflow typically start in something like um, Illustrator or Photoshop? Great definitely question. In thanks, Luke. Yeah, thanks, Luke. Def definitely start in Illustrator and Photoshop. Mm. I, I, I found it's it was a bad habit of mine to just get straight into After Effects and start designing in there because you, you can do that. And, you know, you can discover some fun things like we're doing here, but this is, you know, more of a, you know, it's more of a research and development kind of phase. But like, definitely I find the more time you spend outside of After Effects, the, the easier time you'll have animation. The more time you spend designing in Photoshop and Illustrator, the better your designs will be because you're not limited because the design tools in After Effects, there's some, you know, you can, you've got a pencil so you can create a lot of stuff and you can create lots of repeaters and things like that, but they're not as powerful as Illustrator or Photoshop where you can change, you know, you've got more control of colors and different layers and all sorts of blending modes. You've just got way more tools and mm -hmm. that's what I'm more comfortable in. So ideally I'd set aside, here's, you know, the first half of the day I'm designing. I, I, I'm not even allowed to open After Effects. All I'm doing is my job is to make it look as good as possible. And sometimes I try not to even think that I'm going to have to animate this because if I'm thinking, if, my, if I'm thinking in the back of my head, oh, this is going to be difficult to animate. I kind of, I found what I would do is just really simplify and mm. cut corners mm -hmm. um, with my illustrations. And it really sort of 
you know, kind of hindered them. It could have been better. And I wasn't really pushing myself in animation. So now what I like to do is like, all right, I'm going to design the best thing I can animate, and like design the best thing I can design. And then it's my job to figure out how to animate this and you know, push myself <laughs> to find, find those solutions. Um, I love that idea. Kind of that's, that's future Ben's problem. Like you, you have to kind yeah. of separate. <laughs> exactly. I think with, like in the, in with that first stream we did with that planet guy, mm. uh, that was one where I, I just started adding gradients and I thought, this looks really cool. I'm just going to add heaps of gradients and figure out the animation later. Mm. And then, you know, it ended up, you know, looking pretty good, I think. Yeah, it was cool. So that's kind of, that's kind of how I like to structure things. I think a design phase is, you know, essential to have beforehand, especially if you're working with a client, ideally, if I'm, if you're working with a client, have, have a design locked off everything before you start animating. So mm. they know how exactly how every scene is going to look. I know a lot of times there's not enough time or like budget to make that. And you kind of like, if you have one day to make something was well, like, well, I can't design something and send it over to the client because they can't, you know, give feedback in time for me to execute it. You've just got to execute kind of the first thing you think of. And that's not an ideal place to be, but if you've got enough time, um, ideally structured out. So you, you're designing everything in the first, you know, week, and then the second week is animating. And it just becomes so much easier when you're not having to think about that. Like you only think about making it look good. You're not thinking about, you know, Ooh, how could this, you know, how could this look better? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's what I'd say. I like it. Um, another question from Eva, what, Ben, what mm -hmm. do you enjoy most about the process of animation from start to finish? Which phase is your favorite? Oh, I really like, um, I suppose at the end, at the end of the animation, I think the design I find <laughs> when, when I'm finished, when I'm done. Yeah. Well, it's great. Oh, the, the last little steps when you, when you're adding, yeah, fin finishing feels great. But the, <laughs> the last little steps when you're adding just the little details, when you, you know, like oh, the hard work's done, I find design, uh, maybe one of the hardest parts I find at the very beginning and the very end when I'm just coming up with ideas, when I'm like, all right, let's come up with something to animate like there's no you know restrictions and you feel it's very freeing uh, sort of creating process then the, the design is i find that really like it, it's tough because it's like it's a bit like laborious you've got to you know you've got to make lots of keystrokes and draw you got to move your mouse a lot and do things you've got to make a lot of things happen and if you're making a detailed illustration it won't look good for a long time you got to put you know build the basic framework Whereas when it's all in your head, it's like all, it's all possibilities, possibilities, and it's all exciting. Mm. And then the designing it is hard, and then you've got lots of problems to solve. When you've actually got to put it into reality, you've got to think, ah, oh, this is now. Well, how do, how is this leg going to look if we're sitting behind a chair? Should it be you know kicked over or at this angle? There's lots of you know those sort of design problems to solve, which you know I don't particularly enjoy. Adding texture and gradients after the design is finished. Uh, after the base design is really fun because that's just like, all right, I'm just, you know, icing the cake. Like every stroke you make is like improving the, the design. So that feels really good. Then the animation, the, normally there's a blocking phase where you, you just animate the rough parts, like animate the, you know, the basic structure that takes mm. a lot of time and it doesn't look that great at that point. But then sort of every step after that, where you just add easing and then add some, you know, extra effects and things like that. You're adding, it feels like, you know, you're bringing value to the, um, to the design and you can see it getting better but before your very eyes so yeah those are the bits that i enjoy the most that's cool i hope that I hope that answers <laughs> that awesome. answers your question either how about one more question then we'll, when we get then we'll get back stuck into it what do you say yeah absolutely um what is your favorite dream project oh favorite dream project i would love a well i'm I'm working on a little bit of, I'll give a bit, a bit of a tease of a project I'm working on now. Oh. It's not a, it's not a dream project, but it's a, a sort of proof of concept project. So I work on a, a collaborative project with a bunch of my, you know, illustrators and like animators I, I'm close to where we're working together, animating a few little, um, you know, each animating a scene for a, a longer, big, um, big project. And that's really like, really fun so it's like i'm giving everyone you know we've got a theme and a color palette and then everyone's you know go nuts animate whatever you want in you know in 36 frames and make it look awesome and then together mm. we're going to have this, this project where it's just you know back to back animation in different styles on the same theme which is you know lots of lots of fun and, lo and lots of different ideas so i would love 
and I've called that Project Manticore. If you ever hear, if you see people hashtagging Manticore or me Ooh. talking about it, that's what that is. That's the, the secret code name. Cool. But that's a little bit of behind the scenes. But I would love, my goal would be, I want to do one of those every year and change it up, like change who I work with and change, you know, the scope of them, maybe do one that's, you know, a tighter, more focused project. But what, what I would secretly hope to happen is, you know, Coca-Cola sees that or, you know, a big brand with lots of money that's, you know, right. isn't overtly evil by the nature of being a large corporation <laughs> and, and, and not, you know, um, you know, you know, BP or, you know, Monsanto or something, someone, you know, a, a big company with a friendly face comes someone says, that aligns with your values. Yes, exactly. It says he's a, he's a lot of money, but he's, you know, he's a hundred grand go make us a two minute animation. And I can get together. I can just pick, all right, let's pick 10 of my, you know, 10 of the best animators for this job. And let's just, you know, make something crazy. That would, that would be an awesome project to do where I can like animate a part, but like direct people loosely and just let them do the best thing that they're capable of. Because at the moment I'm mainly, especially having to do a tutorial every week, I can't really do projects on a large scale. And that's a kind of way for me to, you know, make a larger project by uh, collaborating. So I'd love to do more of that. So expect you know, probably some more collaboration uh, projects um, in the future. That's awesome. I like it. Answered the question and gave us a sneak peek. Project Manticore, I'm going to check that out. I bet there's something out there. I'm sure someone's working on <laughs> it. on the hashtag. Mm -hmm. I'm going to check it out. All right, what say you? Shall we jump back into part two? Let's jump into the second part. Here we go. All right, so the second part, let's cover creating this animation. And this animation, let's start building it from scratch. So let's hide these two layers down here just so we can refer to them later if we, you know, forget what, we, what we're trying to make. Mm -hmm. Excuse me again. Pardon me. Very, very burpy again today. Burp when I'm nervous, if you're, if you're unaware of that, um, <laughs> you know, you know now. Now okay, you know. So let's create, now you know. So let's just select our type tool up here. I'm going to drag out a text box and let's just type in the word type. If everyone, if anyone has any suggestions of a, of a better word other than type. Oh, uh, cool. Let us know, chat. Yeah, give us a word suggestion. Give us a word. And I'm going to keyframe it. Well, yeah. first I'm going to make sure this is aligned right in the center, um, near the center at least, and then keyframe its position here. Um, I'm going to copy that position and paste it at the two-second mark, and then at one second, move it up. So we've got a bit of our type moving up and down. Let's easy ease that with F9, and then let's go into our graph editor to make this a bit more of a steep ease. So I'm going to drag these keyframes and then just pull these handles out. So if you're not familiar with the speed graph, this just represents our movement, you know, in a, in a histogram, I guess. So the Y axis is the speed of our animations going. So it starts off at zero and then gets really fast here where it's going up really steeply. And then at the end comes back down as well. So here where it's low, it's kind of slow. And at here it's working really fast. So, so we get a nice sort of gentle sort of it eases into this top position where it's not really moving much at all. Let's increase that a bit more. We want this even steeper. There we are. Now we are going to add a very cool effect called echo. So if we type in echo over here and see at the moment, we can't really notice, we don't notice anything happening, but if we increase the number of echoes, we can see what we've got here. So this is similar to a repeater, but this is kind of repeating back in time. So this is a, an echo. So it's repeating, you know, what this um, layer was doing at the time, 0 0.032 seconds ago. And we have, of course, a number of echoes that we can choose and our delay. So if we make this delay smaller, our echoes are going to be closer together. So let's, so at the moment we can see with our Y echo, we've got all of these jagged edges, but if we change this to 0 0.133, we've got our, like our echoes are a lot closer together. So mm. they're a lot tighter and let's increase the number of echoes. We, let's, let's go to 50. Let's get a big leap here. And I do want to make these much tighter because I want to remove as much of these jagged objects as possible. What if I go down to 0 0.03 or oh, there we go. That's looking pretty good. So now we've That's got like cool. this sort of long, this sort of tail happening here. 
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a, a, a gradient ramp to this effect as well. So I'm going to add, sorry, to this layer. I'm going to add the effect gradient ramp, gradient ramp, where is that? I need to type in ramp. Here we are. So this um, just gives us the options to add a gradient with an effect over here. So at the moment it's black and white. So we've got one end, which is the black here. And then I think at the bottom of the comp, it puts the white. So let's move this from side to side. And then we can change the start color. Let's go for a nice magenta and nice. our end color, a nice cyan. So we get a nice range of you know purples and blues in here. And now we've got, and that applies it over, you know, over the whole thing, everything on this layer, the gradient ramp will, you know, add a nice gradient fill to that. Um, Eva, Eva was suggesting that it should be um, the name of your favorite dinosaur. Uh, I'm, the name's too long. I'm yeah, afraid. I was that's thinking for you. that's a good, uh, um, that's a good hint, by the way. I know. I think, oh, I know the shortest dinosaur name is like something like, it's kind of like Mimo. I know it's not Mimo. It's like, I know it's like five, it's five letters in the start of them, but I can't, oh. maybe Mink. Oh, oh, something I can't remember. Oh, wow. Let's say, oh, what's um? Let's go. Let's let's type in. Do you like wash your hands or stay home? Let's get oh, a T Rex. T Rex, great. It's, it's not my favorite dinosaur, but it's look. It's a good dinosaur. It's, it's a cool. top tier dinosaur. If we're going to be honest, it gets mm. a lot of flack in the you know the community for being just you know so popular. But you know, hey, it's popular for a reason. It's it's big, and it has an interesting silhouette. Okay, so now. What I want to do is create a bit more of a, um, a fun effect by duplicating this. So I'm going to duplicate this text layer and I'm going to remove the gradient ramp. So we get our black and then I'm going to remove the echo. So now we've got our sort of black text, just doing that motion, do, sorry, doing that motion with no effect. And we've also got this, um, you know, so we've kind of got like a long delayed shadow, which I think looks pretty cool. I love that color. This is like, neon oh, awesome. super cool yeah and maybe hmm, something else we can do is ah, oh, i'll show you another while we're here with our text layers an awesome trick so say now if i wanted to change this top text layer to say you know um like you know sarah the triceratops um our, our bottom layer is you know still saying T-Rex. So it's not too hard to go into that and change that to Sarah. But if we had a lot of different layers, that's going to be more difficult. So one way that you can link these two text layers up is to open up their menu, you know, their little, you know, drop down menus down here, open up text and we've got text source here. And I want to open that up on both of them. And I'm going to option click the text source here to bring up our expression window. And I'm just going to pick whip it to this layer. So now it adds the expression. So the source of this expression is going to be this comp layer Sarah text dot text source. So really what that means is anything I type in this text box, mm. uh, you know, refresh on both of them. So that can be, you know, really handy if you, you know, you've got a bunch of effects and you only want to alter one thing. Like if you're maybe making some lower thirds and you have a shadow or a glow effect or something that requires a couple of text layers, here's how you can link them. Very cool. All right, so, so, and I'm doing that now because I want to duplicate a, um, so I want to create another layer and add another effect. So I'm going to duplicate this Sarah layer down here. It's still got, a, it's still got the, the layer name is Sarah, but we can duplicate that, bring that over the top. And I'm duplicating this bottom one because um, it still has that, that expression in the text source. So if we change this again to haha, it will um, update on all three of the text layers. Let's change that back to, uh, what should we say? Um, hats. I'm, str I'm like struggling with what, what's a word? I can't think of any word. I'm on the spot now. <laughs> hats, <laughs> that's, that's a word. Um, all right, so on this top layer, I want to remove the echo. So it's just a, you know, a colorful version of this top layer here. And then I'm gonna draw a mask with our rectangle tool and I'm going to draw that mask over the bottom here. So we get a bit of color on the bottom and then I'm, then I'm going to press F to bring up our mask feather and feather that slightly. So now we get a nice cool looking sort of shadow effect here where we can kind of see 
that color, but just through the bottom. So it kind of looks like a nice inky bleed, which is kind of fun. That's and then cool. when we go back down, we've got this sort of harsh line that define that, you know, divides it. And also another cool property of our echo and our echo layer is this one and the very bottom, you've also got add decay. So add decay at the moment is one. So each, um, echo is going to be a hundred percent the opacity of the previous one. But if we change this to 0 0.8, we get a nice gradient. And that's because each, if we zoom in close, we can see like the next layer closest to this one. The next echo is, you know, 90%, sorry, 80% opaque. And then the next one is going to be 60% and then 40% and then 20 and you know, so on. Well, it's going to be 80% of the previous one as well. So it's going to take a little bit longer to fade out. Mm. Let's change that to 0 0.9. So we get a bit of a longer one and we get a nice sort of um, effect that looks kind of like a motion blur, but, um, you know, it's just, you know, really fun. I discovered this, you know, mm. in one of my, as a happy accident, <laughs> you know, during a research and development phase. And I just thought it was a really cool, um, sort of stack of effects where you can get some, you know, interesting results. Yeah. I love that there bleed that, that color bleed that's coming through is a really cool effect. Yeah. That is nice. And we could maybe even, oh, dare we try to add some fractal noise? I think we try. It's Friday. Let's do it. I'm going to add a new Friday. solid control. Fractal Friday. I'm going to add a new solid. It doesn't matter the color and add the effect. Fractal noise. Oh, oh VR fractal noise. Don't want that. Do you want regular fractal noise? <laughs> okay, here we are. So fractal noise, that just creates a kind of cloud, cloudy shape. And what we can do this is just like a rant and this is like completely randomly generated and people often use this for creating sort of clouds and mist. So I'm going to see if I can add a bit of texture to this, um, to this echoey delay using this. So at the moment it's, um, it's pretty, it's black and white. There's not much contrast. So let's increase the contrast here. And we can also increase, uh, I'm going to transform, increase the scale it's a little bit bigger. That might be all right. And I'm going to use this, um, as an alpha map. So I'm going to select our Sarah layer down here, which is our echoed layer and select, oh, no, we didn't want to choose Luma mat. So if we choose Luma mat, what that does is it takes, mm. I want to make this visible, all the white areas and makes everything white in this, um, deep cyan layer. Let's rename this fractal noise because we always label our layers. Don't want label is turning up again. So anything that's white in this layer will be visible on this layer here. So now we get a bit of sort of a ghostly foggy background here and let's see what else we can do to make that a bit more interesting on our fractal noise let's make this visible again let's we can change we've got our fractal noise type we've got ooh, smeary that might look cool like, i want to get a bit of a paint look happening and let's change we need to animate it so let's change this evolution let's keyframe its evolution here um I just mean to keyframe that and not add an expression. We could remove that expression. Keyframe it, evolution zero there, and then maybe at one here. So now let's change our resolution down to half. I think that's going to be a bit too intense. We get this sort of cool evolving sort of smokiness happening. And now if we hide that, that will should animate sort of nicely in our little ghostly pass here. It's not very, you can barely see it though. Yeah, so it's that, very subtle. It does add just a little bit of, you know, texture kind of looks like a bit of, you know, light, like a bit of a kind of lightning effect there maybe. Mm. But Frack Noise is a really awesome you know, tool to just generate some, you know, random chaos for then you, that you can use as mats. And we've got different modes here. We've got Smeary, Rocky as well. There's a nice blocky one as well. What's it? Small bumps, strings, threads, terrain. What's terrain like? That doesn't look very terrainy to me. I, I, I've never seen terrain <laughs> like that. Um, yeah, um, swirly. That's pretty nice. You can get some, you know, just interesting looks with that. So try some fractal noise sometime. Fractal noise, That's kind of cool. Friday. It, uh, I like it. Yeah. Mm. Kind of gives it maybe a bit like a tie dye. Mm. Kind We're of definitely following this like music video theme, like all that. That was like very grunge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So another effect I want to show is CC Collider. 
and that um, continuing today's theme of you know adding a whole lot of extra stuff without you actually having to animate much things. So I've got my YouTube intro up, up here in a new composition, and let's just have a little look at this. So we've got a whole a few scenes with a bunch of different colors. And what I'm going to do is add a new adjustment layer, which um, the shortcut for that is Control Alt Y. But you can always go up to Layer New Adjustment Layer down here, where you can add a shape, shape layer, or a null object, or a camera, or anything you want to add. You can add it up here as well. But that's one I use often, so I've memorized that shortcut. And then if we add the effect CC Collider, we go down here. Already in one click, we can say it's transformed our animation into something completely different. So let's play this and see what that's done just by default. So we can see it's created a kaleidoscope and it's taking the information from certain elements of our intro. So if we increase the size, it's going to take it from a larger area. So we can see a bit more of it and we can already get some cool sort of, sort of psychedelic looks here. And so what it's really doing is it's taking sort of one sort of square of our underlying animation. So here, I'm not sure where, it, here it looks like it's from taking it from this section of our little rainbow popping out. If I flick that back and forth, it looks like that's mm. taking it from here. So it's taking this section of our, of our comp that's underneath and duplicating it and flipping it and rotating it and doing all sorts of things to it to you know fill out this square. And we've got a whole bunch of options here for mirroring. At the moment, it's flower. We can change it to wheel. Oh, now we can see it pretty, you know, we can see a lot it, uh, clearly taking this, you know, one square section, but here it's not really rotating or flipping it. The unfold, that, that looks pretty cool as well. And there's a whole bunch of different ones. Deer cross, I like starfish, I think is my favorite. Mm -hmm. And we've got a whole bunch of options here for the center as well. At the moment it takes it from the very center, but we can just drop this anywhere and move this around till we get an area that we like. And even not animating anything, if you just drag this around you, your canvas, you get some really cool effects. And we haven't even, you know, barely done anything. So mm. let's move it here. We've got this sort of this band-aid repeating. <laughs> and let's play it back and see what see what that looks like. Wow. See so already like you could present this, you know to a client, if they want, oh, we need a psychedelic scene or something, mm. or, you know, it's or some you know, repeating background. You could just take, like, this is an animation I did a year ago. Check this effect on there. You've got something completely different. Yeah. They might recognize, you know, the colors, but even then you could go and, you know, let, oh, let's, let's add the hue saturation. It's like a quick solution for, for anyone out there that might, might be creating like backdrops for DJs or something that needs, that you oh, know, needs to go absolutely. for an hour, just quickly, quickly throw something like this over and a few variations. And there you go. You've got some abstract, um, you know, abstract, abstract craziness. Absolutely. But if we just change the hue and saturation on this and play that back, I reckon, you know, people would struggle to recognize this as, you know, sections mm. of my, my intro. So I don't think I'd be done for, you know, just reusing old work, mm. but you can animate all of these properties as well. Let's increase the size. So we can, let's I like it quite large. So we can see a large area and this, this front parts, you know, because the color changes so much, it's a bit um, too intense. So let's start our workspace here using our B shortcut and one, I really like sometimes we get these nice, um, we get these like all repeating flower shapes in the middle here, like this, I really like. There's frames like that, I'm like, mm, that looks really good. Mm. Um, so let's animate the center. So let's go to the very start, keyframe the center here, pop up U, press U on our keyboard to pop up our keyframes. And let's just drag the center. I can't really see where the center is here. Let's move it with our mouse, oh, it's down here. That's where it is. It's hard to see amongst all, all the chaos. Let's move it over here. That was, that's a really nice that's frame awesome. as well. Like, oh, these, are, these are good frames over here. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's got my, with my name all over the place. Let's see if we can get one where we can see a bit more of my characters. Uh, maybe we're not going <laughs> to end up seeing anything like that. Looks nice. Something that's not too bad. These are going to look really intense though, when we transition between them. So be prepared. And let's go move this one over here. This lot, yeah, something like that. 
All right. Now let's see how this looks with that. What do we end up with? Them. My gosh. So there we are. We've got, see, this would be perfect for some, you know, for like some VJing, some like mm -hmm. EDM artist, with some crazy, <laughs> crazy breakdowns. Actually, yeah, you can do a lot of stuff with this. And what we could also do is I can select this, you know, adjustment layer and maybe let's go back over to our repeaters and let's, let's go for our first circle, our square repeater. And let's just paste that adjustment layer and that applies that CC collide effect. Let's see how this looks. Oh, that's cool. Wow. All right. <laughs> I didn't expect it to look that good. Let's extend this out. That gradient works so nicely. Mm. It's a bit too intense and fast. So let's maybe just spread out these two keyframes. And why is that stretching? Oh, it's because our, our repeater goes very small in the middle. Mm -hmm. That's why we get it in this small box. Hmm, how can we adjust that? Well, we changed now the size won't adjust anything there. Oh, we can also change as well in CC Cloud. You've got rotation here. And just by rotating that, that also just adds some crazy cool things as well that you can animate on top as well if you want. But um you could just Already, you could just is... pause at any point and you've got this like completely unique, like crazy abstract like exactly. frame. Yeah. Take take any 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 shot, print that out, mm. sell sell it at any market, you know, take it to a, you know <laughs> take it to the markets. Take it to a festival. Not at the moment. <laughs> hang on to it for six months or so. Yes, hang on it, you know, put, put it online. Mm. <laughs> sell it online. I sell it online, um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, well, just a shout out to chat that we've got about 10 minutes and then, and then we've got a little bit of time for Q and A at the end. So if you do have any, any questions for Ben, now is a good time to get them in. So we'll try to get to them before we run out of time. In. Awesome. Okay. Now might be a good time then to go through some of our bonus, bonus effects. Bonus um, round, we... Friday, Friday bonus round. I love it. So these are like the really, the weird effects that you, you know, might, <laughs> I thought that was our weird effect that we discussed. Oh, no, no, that's that. That's tame compared to these. Wow. So we've got one effect. It has my favorite. This one has my favorite name for any effect in After Effects. It's okay. called Mr. Mercury. CC Mr. Wow. Mercury. We also got Mr. Smoothie as well. You know, I haven't tried Mr. Smoothie before. After we try Mr. Mercury, let's live find out what Mr. Smoothie is. Okay. Both excellent names. Okay, so we've added this effect, and already you can see this is what we've we've got. Let's turn that volume down. And we can see this is what Mr. Mercury does. Oh. It adds this splurting out of like a liquid sort of shiny metallic version of whatever you've got underneath. So we've got a few options here. Let's increase the, like, oh, you can see like it even like rotates in like a 3D space when you spin around the X radius. And we can increase the birth rate. We probably want that a little bit lower. Um, I want, and we can move where it's produced from as well. So it can come from the top of the bottom. And it's got, it's got a slider here that just says extra. It's always great when you've got a slider like, what was it going to do? <laughs> it was doing enough as it is. Turn it up to um, 11. Okay, it's animation, yeah, it's animation type at the moment is explosive. Let's change that to twirly. I like things that twirl. So now we get a nice bit of spinning animation. Wow. And it creates a kind of realistically refracting liquid um, effect. But what's really awesome, what I like to do, um, to see how this effect works is I want to duplicate this layer and on our bottom, and on our bottom layer, I'm going to delete Mr. Mercury. So now we can see this is like someone spilt water over the top of our animation and you can kind of see where mm. it's sort of refracting. And over here, this has looked pretty good. I like how we can see all of these sort of, our, our background layer sort of refracting and like the layer, mm. you know, the E and the N here are getting shrunken down here and we could change the gravity as well down to minus two. Now it should maybe flow, you know, less downwards and blob birth size. Let's increase the size of the blobs. So they're a bit bigger, but there we are. There's Mr. Mercury. Um, if you ever need you know, something that looks like you've got mercury over the top of, you know, your effect, this is interesting, wow. but I really like just something like you get these really interesting moments like down here, yeah. we've just got like a, just a smaller version of this, you know, um, blind cactus character you know, re refracted in here. And it looks like a pretty realistic, you know, simulation of, you know, what a water droplet would look like on there. Mm. So let's, so let's get rid of Mr. Mercury and let's figure out what Mr. Smoothie is. <laughs> okay. Okay. What's, oh, 
Well, th this isn't. No, th this is pretty interesting. It looks, you know, not great. It looks, you know, pretty jarring. But <laughs> maybe if you're after a sort of an anti-design kind of look, this could be interesting. <laughs> Take the property from probably from the luminance. Eh, red. Okay, and we oh we can tramples from. That's interesting. Okay, well. If you ever need sort of like a maybe a glitchy version, it kind of mm. reminds me of like the Better Call Saul intro, where it's like all these layered VFX, um, mm. VHS effects and artifacts sort of reacting Remind, to each other. It reminds me of that. It reminds me of Mully Grubs as well. Do you remember Mully Grubs? I have no idea what Mully no Grubs is. No idea what is. that is. What is, yeah. what is Mully Grubs? It was like it a show like on the ABC. Chat, help me out. <laughs> That's exactly what it sounds like. I might, be, I might be the like... oldest person here and in chat. It was just like Sorry. a play school kind of thing. Like it was a show like that. And they had all these kind of, yeah, wacky VHS kind of odd Technicolor effects happening. And it was all like super intense for a kid to see oh, every wow. day. Yeah. That, that, sound, that sounds great. Okay, Mr. Smoothie, I give you 8 out of 10. That was pretty good. Okay. So the next effect is what I think is the weirdest effect in After Effects. Let's create a new object. Let's create a... A, um, a, a ball, no, actually, let's not create an ellipse. Let's create a, um, a star, create a star right in the middle of my composition. And I'm going to add the effect CC hair. So CC hair adds a whole bunch of hair to whatever layer you've got on. See, there we are. Yeah. Now I've got a nice hair, a hairy star, hairy starfish. And we've got lots of options for our hair here. We've got, we can make our hair longer. And as it gets longer, it starts to like droop down as well. So you can see we've got a nice short, like stubbly sort of, you know, like bristly, you know, George Michael style hair here. Then we get a nice longer version. We've got hair thickness to create thicker hair, which, you know, makes it heavier. So there's like a realistic hair simulation wow. in After Effects that I've seen this use of some really interesting effects. On one of Andrew Kramer's tutorials, he used it to create like this, um, it was this text that had all these plants growing out of it, um, like kind of like like some moss growing, like it was all damaged and decayed. And he just added CC hair on a few little areas and it kind of looked like these these strings of grass were coming out. Mm. And it was really interesting. And we can change the density as well, so you can make it really sparse, like it's really thinning or like really dense and get it, you know, really, really luscious. Oh, if you put it up all the way, look at that. That <laughs> looks like a cool like extrusion of the star and you know we're at full resolution and it's not really you know damaging our playback at all and we've got some other options down here as well and here there's hair full map we can add noise to make it a bit more scruffier so it comes out in random directions oh mm. let's turn that down a bit to 30. and that looks kind of like a you know like a nice sort of you know sort of pattern of like some woven paper and <laughs> that's not too bad. This is like, and it looks, the lighting is relatively realistically in 3D. Mm. So let's get a light and change the direction. And we can, you know, spin around. And we've got a nice, you know, let's light it from the, from the top. Ooh, hey. There we are. Line, oh, light height. We can change the lighting here. And I've got hair color. We've got to change the hair color. The default brown. Let's make it. What does a blonde starfish look like? And and a very jet black. It's maybe a gray. Maybe this is a you know an aged starfish. No. Let's oh, make it poor aged starfish. No. Let's make it bright purple. Fabulous starfish. All right. So that is CC hair. I'm not sure if anyone else has a weirder After Effects effect. <laughs> But that's the weirdest one that I've come across. That's cool. Um, yeah. And we, let's just animate its length. Let's animate its hair growing. Let's start at, you know, 10. And we can start, um, um, we can start Q and A early as well. Cause we've got a few in there, so we can do that too. Oh, awesome. Let's go to that. Cause I think it's going to take some time to render. Okay. So I'm going to easy ease these and play this back and see, you know, oh, the RAM preview is not too bad actually. So let's see how <laughs> start pitches. Going hair. I've I've never actually used this to animate hair growth before, because you know, first time live right here. Live. Okay, well, that needs to animate much quicker. Let's animate hair growth in three seconds. 
All right. Yeah, we can let's start some Q and A while while, cool. while this is going. And um, this is a question from before. So, um, well, it relates to what you're doing before. So, you were using the speed graph. Um, is your preferred mm. graph? Is this your preferred graph over the value graph? Are there situations where you separate dimensions in the position value to use the speed graph? Um, I my preferred uh, graph editor is the value graph editor. I much prefer the value graph editor. Mm -hmm. um, it. It gives you a lot more control. I'll show you an example. While we're here, we can see our starfish. Nicely growing hair. Isn't that lovely? But let's um, create a, a new a new layer, a new object. Let's create a, just a rectangle. So what what I the value graph is really awesome for some getting some awesome rotations and anticipations in position. So let's keyframe its rotation, um, and let's go from to ninety degrees one second and then and then yeah let's ease ease those with f9 go to the graph editor so the speed graph looks kind of like this if i wanted to ease into this area i can do it like that so it's going to start off you know slow and get fast but i want to have a bit of anticipation so before that so it's going to go to 90 degrees so before that i want it to go to maybe 93 degrees and then bounce back so it starts spinning and then you know it just goes a little bit further and then bounces back. And that's really awesome for, you know, creating more of a realistic motion in After Effects and selling sort of the weight and the momentum. Mm. So if we go in and look at these, this is the speed graph, look at the speed graph, we can kind of um, figure out um, how to make that you know, look nice here, but it's so much easier in the value graph. Where here we can see, let's make this full screen. This is our final resting position and it's a lot easier for me to visualize that we start at zero degrees, go up to 90 degrees, go a little bit further. And we could even drop this down and adjust these graphs, like adjust the busier handles to make it more severe like this. And this is like easier for me to read. So we can see like we have this keyframe, both the, our resting position, but we're going to continue this sort of easing graph over a little bit and just pop up slightly. So we get just a really subtle just flick at the end here and that's easier for me to see than this is what that looks like in the speed graph it's a bit right. harder to communicate i know it's just this is that value rotation goes up to 90 goes a bit further beyond 90 and then comes back down i i went into the value graph there um, in the previous example mainly because it's a little bit easier to just explain and display in like a sort of a more of a tutorial setting where you can just go in and drag some handles if I just want the easing to be a bit sharper. But if I want to add some anticipation and want to string more than two keyframes together, definitely in the in the value graph. And mm -hmm. same with um, if I'm animating the position of anything, I will separate its um, X and Y dimensions and head into the value graph. The only way you can't do that is if you're animating something that something that moves diagonally. So say if you've got a sort of say if you want this square to let's move our timeline down this square to like if it was going up and down, I do that all in the value graph and separate the dimensions. So I'm only looking right. at the x-axis going up. But if the square needs to move like this and do like a you know loop to loop, it's going to be moving on both dimensions at the same time, and that's really hard to see um, on the value graph because they the x and the y-axis are going to go up and down and overlap all over each other. So I kind of have to do that in the speed graph, but I always kind of resent when I have to get into the speed graph. I often <laughs> don't animate things on diagonal paths and just do them on the X and Y axis because it's um, easier. I'm going to, I'm going to quickly go on to the next question because believe it or not, we've only got five minutes left. Wow. Five minutes left. What? I That's know. insane. It's, it's gone very fast. Um, I know this question came up yesterday, Robinson, so hopefully we can answer it. I'm not sure I completely understand your question, but maybe Ben does. So um, his question is, how do you how do you deal with the fast knowledge curve versus a slow computer? What would you do to oh, handle this problem? I assume the fast knowledge curve versus a slow computer. I assume the meaning you're wanting to do things faster than your computer can handle them, I think. Perhaps, perhaps. Um, I, let me know if that's not the case. Um, normally, when I'm doing things, I try to really... Um, well, I think, you know, an easy solution is to buy better hardware. That's not, you know, no one, you don't have that um, option, but mm -hmm. like, you know, no, everyone has that option, but that can solve things. But I find often it doesn't. As soon as I upgrade my computer, all I do is just add more effects and more textures onto it to bring it to a, you know, push it to its limit. Mm -hmm. But really for the stuff I animate, um, 
I don't really need a super intense machine. Sometimes I animate things on my 2012 MacBook and it handles it fine. I, you just have to, you know, I drop down the resolution a lot. I'm used to working in one third resolution and only bumping it up to the final render. Sometimes you can even, I've even had to go into custom resolution settings. So it's like one sixteenth of the actual revolution for, um, resolution for some projects. Mm. And then like trying to figure out smartly how to reduce your sort of render sort of sizes, like your RAM preview um, duration. So you can pre-render elements. And so you're not rendering those every time or just working smartly with pre comps that you can switch on and off and sort of soloing layers. So if we've got this starfish here and I'm only wanting to animate the square, I will just solo my square and animate my square like this. So it's not, so the computer isn't having to render all of those things in the background just while I'm animating the square. Hopefully uh, that helps a little bit. If that helps. Your question about. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm rushing us a little bit and I'm sorry about that, but um, we've no, no, go for it. Two, two more questions. So Sinan was asking, um, where do you get your animation references? Like if you get any, like films, cartoons, books, that kind of thing. Thanks for the question. Oh, definitely. Um, definitely. I get a lot from, you know, by my peers and other animators and motion designers. I have, you know, I save like stuff on Pinterest and on Instagram. I save a lot of things to collections for reference in future. Normally I'll just see something and think, oh, that looks cool. I want to do something a bit like that and try to mm. figure out what they've added that makes that make me like it in the first place and seeing if I could take that element instead of just, you know, copying it straight away. But honestly, I think Pinterest is a really great source. Behance, of course, as well. On Behance, you've got a big library of, you know, um, um, awesome projects and I, you can see what's the most appreciated. So things like that, I, I find um, really handy, but I like the Pinterest you know, shows you related, you know, related images, um, based on, you know, color and things like that. So it's great for collecting a mood board. Very good. Very good. Great answer. And, um, what's your favorite dinosaur? My favorite dinosaur is Brachiosaurus. 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 It's a classic. Mm. I just love it. It's massive. It's shape. Is really cool it's you know got the big you know shoulders at the front and like the body is kind of triangle shaped mm. big old head you know yeah brachiosaurus i do right i was wondering if the you know, that would if that was the last question or if that was one i'd have to shout at the end just as we right. fade out just as we fade no no it was yeah. very important i'm glad we got to it um but we might we might say our goodbyes now because um we, we oh. there is a hard cut off and so we want to make sure we say we thank everyone and um but where can people find more about your 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 work and your stuff you've got a motion course at the moment where can people find that i do so you can find out more about me on like on youtube i post youtube tutorials every week and on instagram it's you know my name you know if you search it you know you'll find it i have a motion design course on um with motion design school it's called motion practice and it's about integrating frame by frame animation into after effects it's into after effects so it's kind of a free um, frame by frame traditional animation 101 mm. mixed with some you know basic um after effects knowledge so if you know after effects a little bit but you want to add frame by frame that course is for you we've got 40 percent off while we're experiencing uh, everyone's in quarantine and self-isolation so to help people that you know find themselves with more time to spend at home hopefully uh uh, yeah, that helps you out. So that's, you know, 40% off. Um, if you search, go to motion design school or it's linked all over my, um, my Instagram and my, my, my YouTube. Check that out. Obviously that would be amazing. Um, thank you, chat. Thank you, Joe. Thank you everyone. We'll be back again, um, with Adobe live sometime next week. And, um, Ben, it's been fantastic spending these last three days individually together, but with you. Yes. No, thank you so much. It's been great fun. Uh, you know, it's a shame it's come to an end. Thank you everyone in the chat, you know, if you've got any answer questions, message me on Instagram. I'll answer it in there. Great. Thank you, everyone. See you later. See ya.